Hiya folks, it's Chris in Arena Studio Land with a quick vloggy video for you. The new playlist is up and running on the Arena Studio site. As I'm always promising and banging on, I'm going to be uh, trying to get as much content on there as possible. And I think the way forward is just to shoot really quick, uh, straight to the point videos. Uh, today I'm in Arena Studio in crew, hashtag Arena Studio crew. Uh, if you want to like the channel, it'd be great. Subscribe, hit those bells and all those icons and anything you want really for me. Uh, it's up to you. I'm just not that bothered with all that malarkey. Uh, for me, it's just about getting content out there for everybody to see what goes on on a daily basis in Arena Studio land, okay? So today, I'm working on a track and I'm actually cutting up and editing uh, the vocals. And literally, what I was sent was just a vocal performance by uh, a singer called Dylan Lamb, who's got this uh, idea for a track and he's given me carte blanche. She's probably the best way, and I love when I get opportunities like this to work with an artist because they're just... Uh, free reign on anything that I want to do with it really um, and what I'm doing today is I'm just I've basically had the lead vocal which is there um, sliced and diced and just trimming things up a little bit and then I always put a little bit of a fade in just whoops just knocked the camera wasn't very clever was it let me just put that to slip mode up there uh, and I always like to just put a little fade on these types of edits just to take any pops and clicks away from the beginning. But as you can see, I've now split the verse, and I'll give you a little snippet of this in a minute. It's a bit of a dancey track, which has got a nice feel to it. I've not finished editing the vocals. I'm going to pitch correct and Melodyne and probably um, Waves tune one or two bits and bobs on it and then work some harmonies out. We'll get Dylan back in to sing those. A few ad-libs, a uh, few drum fills, bits and bobs to go on it, but I'm really quite excited about the track. It's great uh, because I get to do what, anything I want on it. So as you can see, I've actually got Waves tune on there, but I've not really done any editing on them yet. I could take them off really, even being truthful. Running through the virtual mix rack, uh, which I've just copied to every single track as I've duplicated it and I'm just running a few effects which is probably a little bit intense I suppose when it's not even mixed and I'm just creating this track and arranging it um, and getting everything where it needs to be I've actually you know locked it to a grid fixed the tempo cut and pasted a few parts of the vocal and then put a little bass groove on it and a few drums and a few little keys and synths and trying to create where I think this is going to go. So like I say, as I said earlier, I love this type of stuff. This is the boring bit for me, which is cutting and copying and pasting and editing these vocals. Um, but one of the things that I like to do, which some of you have probably already done anyway, once I've got the master vocal, which isn't my master vocal yet, um, I'll copy it and then certain sections of it I can jig differently with my effects, my processing. So as you can see there, we've got uh, the verse, then the bridge vocals, and then the chorus vocals. I've got a, a duplicate track there, which I'll work on possibly with a few harmonies as a, as a guide uh, in the not too distant future with this. Um, but what it gives me the opportunity to do is when I'm, it gives me a ballpark figure of where I'm going to be when I'm mixing the song um, so that I can process quieter bits, verses when there's not as much instruments going on differently on the vocals to the bridge where things will start to build and then on the chorus we'll obviously layer all the backing vocals and ad-libs and a few more squeaks and squawks and bells and whistles and pops and farts and whatever we can put on there really just to keep the audio uh, stimulation going as I go through this track. So verse one, we've got this little bit of a groove going. Then this next section, this little bridge, obviously my levels are probably all want smoothing over a little bit, but I'm running a couple of compressors on things and I'm not that critical about this. I'm, like I say, I'm just trying to give it a feel, a bit of a vibe of a song. So again, when I come to the bridge bit and everything kicks in, I'm going to process that a bit more, probably a little bit more reverb, slightly different effects of delays and, and which I'll, I'll settle those in as I go through the mix really but uh, if we go from this last section you'll see how I've changed slightly to this chorus 
So when we go to this chorus on, on this section here, um, what I'll probably do is I'll have a little experiment with maybe a little touch more reverb, um, probably going to put a bit more of a, a, a bigger delay, I've already got a slap on there, uh, I've got some verb drop reverbs on there where I'm probably going to reverse a couple of phrases and uh, fade them in with a reverse reverb, all that type of stuff, which I'll go through at some point as I go through this, but again compared to this vocal, um, You'll see this. Wasting my body and dancing my troubles away. Moving my feet till the music like nobody cares. And then if we solo the chorus vocal. Music makes me feel I'm not alone. Music makes me actually hear a little bit of headphones spill on that when he just came in and blitzed the vocal but I'll get rid of all that as, as things get uh, uh, and move and progress forward a bit more so as you can see on the chorus I've actually turned I've EQ'd a little bit more bottom end onto the vocal there as well and I will put probably an exciter across all these vocals once I've got it somewhere there or thereabouts um, and I've actually put obviously a little bit more of a, a delay on there just to wash it in a bit more but sort of give it a little bit more identity itself <laughs> Okay, so the next bit then is we've got a little bit of a drop going on there where I'm just playing with a few bits and bobs, so I'll, I'll let you play, have a listen. Ah, helps if I unsolo it, there we go, so we've just got on this vocal double track they are, I think, there we go. see here as well is I've actually put an extra snare on this section quite nice it just again it just takes the track up another little level as you're going through it this is what you're aiming for really when you're producing something is to keep the content of the track changing and exciting as you go through it so if you notice if we go back to the very beginning we've just got the literally the bass riff um, and a little bit of an electric piano then you compare things to the verse To maybe uh, the third versey bit. So 
obviously that was part of the, the main vocal still staying on there on the bridge vox, which you don't need because I've actually gone to the chorusy section now. This channel's still muted. So splitting and cutting those vocals up like this gives me a lot more flexibility when I'm creating this master vocal in a way. Um, and it's probably done by lots of other people and I, you know, it just gives you more control over these parts, these different sections. So I'll do this with most songs that I work on in a mix for all the clients in Arena Studio here. I'll, I'll do similar things where I might do the same thing with guitar parts and just split the, the verses into other bits and just process everything a little bit differently because with this you know the the amount of ram and processor power that you've got on the machines nowadays it's ridiculous and uh, and this machine that we use in the studio it's just a flyer and it's great you know so it gives me this the options to throw all the uad stuff even though there's not much i'm actually running a few waves and uh, slate stuff on there i'll probably be swapping a lot of these bits and bobs that are on there for the um for the uad gear that i've got because i use the Apollo X16s in Arena Studio as well, which I just love. Um, for, uh, where are we? Let me have a look. For monitor, monitoring and uh, everything there, you know. So uh, I do have different variations of everything as I approach a mix. So this is going to be, a, it's a great little project and it's just got such a good feel, a great groove on it, this track has. And I'm just, I'm still not quite sure of the full arrangement of where I'm going to go but I think what we're desperately looking for now are a few drum fills because obviously I've just programmed some MIDI beats in there um, so I'm actually walloping battery a little bit on this which is pretty good I love battery it's great and then obviously we'll bit of comfort reverb on most things. I just find that when I'm arranging, I like the song to sound like a song and not just a load of audio files. I like to feel that I'm in the position to take it somewhere before I actually do take it somewhere. So that's a little insight into me cutting and editing a few vocals on this track of Dylan's. Uh, like I say, when I do, you know, I will get in close on all these types of edits there and I'll just put my little faders. Sometimes I'll find that um, when I work with a, a breath, of a singer as well you know if you can I find that when as because obviously when they take a phrase you'll hear this <gasps> da, 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 and it's that breath that obviously when you've got a soft close mic vocal sometimes when you can press and you bring it right up there and then you've got to go and edit those bits out well I like to just put a little bit of a crossfade on there uh, which will rip right up the breath there and it'll just tame it before the voice comes in um, so that's a good little tip that I tend to use on most vocals as well and then anything else I would probably have to maybe automate it down with maybe going on to the, the volume settings and just taking those breaths even a little bit more, you know, just giving them a little bit more control as you go through your, your mix when you've got everything arranged and sorted out. So it's just a little insight to what I'm doing on this track by Dylan Lamb. Like I say, give the, give the thumbs up and subscribes and icons a lick and a click and a push and a boot and whatever it is you have to do nowadays. Uh, as you can tell, I'm not that bothered about all that. I'm just more interested in making music. But it's great if you do comment, like, and share all these things for me. I do appreciate it because it does make it worthwhile and it shows me that somebody actually listens to what goes on. So for me, Chris, uh, have a look on the vlog regularly and, and do the updates with me and we'll go on this journey together. And I'm, like I say, the next stage now, I think, is to get Dylan back in where we can double track some of the vocals, three, four parts of harmony on the choruses as well. And I think it's just going to... Um, really blossom the track then it'll just take it to another level because I like some songs like this where it's just a simple groove all the way through you, you might not think that you've got much to do with it but I find that you can actually get more out of a simple repetitive groove than you can with large chord progressions and orchestration that we work on so for me it's quite an exciting project to work on this it's Dylan Lamb we haven't even got a title for the song yet as you can see up there it just says Dylan Edit so that's what it's going to be called. Um, I wish, make my life easy. So for me, Chris, thanks for watching. And I'll update you as quickly as possible with things on a regular basis. Um, and just stay safe and well, and I'll see you soon. Bye.